everyone. Welcome back for a brand new episode in our Cloud Tank podcast. I have my colleague here, Z Beg. My name is Joe, and we are very passionate about cloud computing um, and interested in the digital age and how everything's changing so fast. So thank you for tuning in today. Z, how are you? Yeah, I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing good. I'm feeling a little under the weather. Um, I think I had a cold this past weekend, um, so I'm recovering now. That's why my voice sounds a little scratchy. That's why. But no, overall, it's it's good. Yeah, that happens to every famous podcaster, you know. Does it? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, uh, also welcome to our viewers and uh, thanks for joining. Yeah. Thanks for listening. And the feedback of this podcast has been very positive and uh, yes. we read comments and people enjoying uh, us talking about cloud computing in yeah. general. And what, what, what we are talking today, Joanna? Today, we are talking about infrastructure as code. Um, we're talking about the benefits, how it works, why it's important for any digital business. And I think we're going to introduce some of the products that are um, well known in the industry to help you get started if you're interested going this route. Why don't you explain a little bit about what infrastructure as code is and what the process is like? Yeah, absolutely. So problem with the infrastructure as code basically let's again uh, before talking about new concepts or something you know uh, latest technologies i always uh, try to go back to the traditional it problems you know so it used to be like we we had like uh, for example whenever we start a new project we had to estimate how much hardware we need how much uh, servers we need how much hard drives we need networking and all different you know type of physical things okay where we will put our servers all these things you have to estimate before even you start the project and uh, right. with cloud computing that has changed so now now you don't uh, that estimation part is out of you know of the equation okay. but now you are more like okay i need these surveys i need to you know get things up and running quickly and uh, that's how basically now people go with it. But the problem mm. comes with it like, okay, you are keep building services on services, on services, on services. In the end, <laughs> you lose track. Okay, where you were, how many services you are using. Right. And uh, how much, uh, for example, in development environment are you using, for example, uh, medium size uh, EC2 instance or virtual machine or in production, you are using large size or what is basically all different parameters of configuration that you have built on AWS, I mean, or in the cloud services. I mean, uh, it's pretty easy to spin up services in the cloud. You just click a button, it spins up. Uh, you select different options, what region you want these services to run. Mm. Uh, but uh, how you keep track of these things? How you can, can you easily repeat those steps? Because if somebody has already, for example, launched the servers, if that server goes down, you have to actually start the same settings, configuration, and everything again. Mm. So the concept of infrastructure as code was formed. That mm. uh, The idea behind it is very simple. It's like, can we write uh, a, a code? Mm. Uh, basically, the programming language where you write code and set of instructions you write. So can you write a program or set of instructions that how our infrastructure should be? And when you run those instructions in, in any cloud provider, connect with your cloud provider, it's automatically spins up mm. the same infrastructure, Process, networking, basically. everything, a hard drive, servers, networking, and all these security settings, policies, whatever your desired state is, is already spins up. Okay. And that saves a lot of uh, prob, uh, I mean, headache. Uh, yeah. Now you are you can easily repeat that. For example, if server goes down, you can spin up the same infrastructure again and again. You can create multiple copies of it, and uh, so that's basically infrastructure as a code. It's basically set of instructions to the cloud provider that how my infrastructure should be, what type right, of first... software should be installed on these machines what type of servers should be, what is the mm -hmm. size, what is the hard drive, what is the memory, and all these things. Mm -hmm. And it's it's basically makes you repeat that process again and again. 
So it help, really helps with reusability, repeatability versus before where you, I'm assuming you had to do all these processes manually, right? Yeah, so and uh, having like, a, for example, a international data center world, you mm. have like a one server and for example, you're running out of disk space. What you do? You buy a new drive, you order a new drive, it takes a week to ship. <laughs> and then you come and plug that in. You have to shut down the server, then plug that drive in again <laughs> and wow. then spin up the server, then test something is happening. OK, you have to format the drive. And so there are like a lot of steps manual involved with cloud computing that is is changed. Now, hmm. for example, if you need, OK, instead of 100 GB drive, you need like one terabyte drive. You just click a button and you can have like that drive available to you. Right, uh, and that's the concept of infrastructure. And can you write that same instructions that you are doing on the screen when you're clicking the button? Can right. you write that same instructions in on in a code? And mm -hmm. when you run that code, it's automatically mm -hmm. um, follows the same instructions and and give you the desired state that you're looking for. Right. So why is using infrastructure as code? Why is it important? Like, what hurdles are we avoiding when practicing this? I mean, it's a it's it's a big uh, time saver, you can say, mm -hmm. and uh, you can uh, the biggest benefit, in my opinion, is uh, to track the code changes. Okay, who has changed the infrastructure, and who is the person actually uh, mm -hmm. change, uh, and what is the actual changes? Okay. So that is the main uh, important thing. Uh, for example, who removes this file from the server? For example. That okay. is also one thing. Yeah. Uh, that is like a common problem. Hey, I deleted this file by mistake. And uh, if you don't have infrastructure as code and things like that, there are like different categories of infrastructure as code as well. And I think today we are just talking about more specifically to infrastructure. But there mm -hmm. is like also a part called configuration management tools as well. Uh, but uh, we'll be talking more into it. Um, but uh, infrastructure as code is like, Okay, I need these servers to spin up and uh, these these network settings and all these security settings and all hard drives and everything. I can write set of instructions and I can track those changes over there. So, okay, for example, tomorrow I okay. need like three servers instead of two. I can just add to my configuration program I, and in my basically uh, code and just run that instructions again and now we'll have three servers. So now you yeah. can easily track, okay, we used to have two servers, but now six months ago, for example, we now have three servers. Right. So that's the main benefit is, it, and it's again, you can track changes, who did what, and it also like other benefits, like what I explained. Scalability, already. yeah. Yeah, I'm sure it helps like streamline deployments, helps to, re you know, for speedy recovery. Are there any other benefits um, that you would, that you think of? Yeah, so for example, uh, is, uh, you talked about like deployments. Yeah. So for example, um, uh, with the cloud, there is like a one concept, it's called mutable infrastructure. For okay. example, uh, I have 10 different virtual machines running and five different uh, lambdas or uh, serverless functions running and all these things. Mm. Um, and if I want to test a new application, new feature, with cloud computing, what you usually do, instead of like deploying the same code into the same server, you actually create a new set of uh, servers or maybe oh. new set of environment completely, um, which which is like similar to what, what you are doing last time. You mm. already have, but you spin yeah. up a new environment and you test in that environment everything, that if it's working all together, and so that gives you a confidence that okay, my code will work because yeah. I'm I'm I have a set of instructions written. I've just executed it, and it's like a repeatable process. So okay. that's a um, so if I need like three different environments to test it, like I have dev, QA, production, or UAT or staging, I have just same set of instructions. I can spin up the same you know environment and. Okay. So that's kind of a streamline that. Again, another benefit could be like recovery. For example, mm. if your uh, infrastructure is down, for example, in one of the region, 
uh, when, for example, we are talking about AWS, where they have recently issue with uh, some of the region, for example, USDs one services were down. If you have those code already configurations and everything is written as infrastructure as code, you right. can just deploy the same thing into a different environment, into a different region. Right. And uh, uh, because it's repeatable, you will have like the same services in available in a different region. I mean, there are better ways to design your uh, solution for high availability and scalability. But yeah. we are just talking like a, some of the benefit of infrastructure as, yeah. as code. Um, okay. Yeah, another benefit could be like consistency, which I already talked about it. Yeah. And reusability, version control. You you can control who did what change. And mm -hmm. again, uh, if the code is is on the in the in the files or in, in form of writing, it's easy to document as well. You everybody can understand okay what type of basically code is. Okay. Okay. What about some of the products that are available? in the software technology industry? Yeah, so the uh, every cloud provider have their own thing. Okay. You know, so AWS, for example, CloudFormation uh, okay. is, is the name of the technology. You write CloudFormation script. Um, the way you write CloudFormation is like basically a language, a YAML or JSON is a couple of uh, uh, standard industry standard languages, you can say. Um, uh, these are not really a languages, <laughs> YAML, but yeah. it's, it's a, like a, the way you write your code. Um, it's like a markup language okay. or J, JSON. So YAML stands for yet another markup language oh, okay. <laughs> as, a, as a joke it started. <laughs> and uh, JSON is like a JavaScript object notation, uh, which is like a easy uh, to define all these uh, elements, what, what your uh, per, um, basically what, what your infrastructure needs. So AWS, the service is called CloudFormation. Uh, Microsoft Azure mm -hmm. has called Azure uh, Resource Manager. Uh, in short, we call it ARM templates. So um, basically it's like whenever you spin up a new service or something, you can actually download the code about it as well. Um, mm. And uh, everything you actually click on the screen, it generates a a code which which is a neat feature in Azure, yeah. and in AWS uh, you have a, a tool called um, basically CloudFormation. You can have like set of instructions written there and just spin up. And I think in Google Cloud also it's called Deployment Manager. Oh, okay. So every cloud provider provides that, uh, but uh, uh, the more uh, if you have a for example a solution that works on multiple cloud. Uh, for example, oh. you have some services is running on AWS, some is running on Azure, some is in Google, or maybe you need like a, a single platform where you can, okay, you know, uh, you, you need to learn only one format and mm. which, wor which works with everything. So uh, I would I would say that uh, HashiCorp Terraform is a very popular tool, okay. uh, which ha has its own language in a sense. Uh, but uh, HashiCorps give you very flexible, uh, you know, technology that uh, you can actually use the same language for AWS, AWS Azure, and uh, cloud you know, providers. Yeah, it works with uh, all different platforms. Yeah. Oh, fantastic! Wow, that was that was good. Um, I think I, I I hope you learned about <laughs> a lot about I did. Uh, infrastructure I did, as code and. Yeah, and I, I wish you, you know. And there's uh, a lot of tools, you know, that you can use in the industry, but it's good to know that there's some options available where you can be flexible, where you can move it from managed service to, to different platforms. So, yeah, very interesting. Yeah, I mean, it's always fun talking about cloud computing, and um, I'm, I'm very and excited. And it's essential, that we are, right? Yeah. It's so important in today's digital age. If you haven't adopted it yet, in some way, shape, or form, you will be soon. <laughs> yeah, if you have any questions uh, to learn more about cloud computing or any technology in general, you can reach out to us yeah. uh, at our email, uh, info at datanextsolutions.com. It's D-A-T-A-N-E-X-T solutions.com. Um, so you can reach out to me. My name is Z or Joe. Uh, mm -hmm. on this and we would love to hear your feedback and yeah I'm, I'm 
And you can also follow us on social media as well. I'll link our profiles in the detail show notes. Um, But thank you so much, everyone, for listening in and catch us back next time. Thanks, Steve. Thank you.